Hello and welcome to another Leak Code Solution video. This is problem number 10, regular expression matching. For this problem, we're given an input string S and a pattern P. Implement regular expression matching with support for a period and a star, where the period matches any single character and the star matches zero or more of the preceding elements. The match should convert the entire input string, not partial. So for example one, we have our input string AA and our pattern A. This will output false as our input string does not match our pattern. For example two, our input string is AA and our pattern is P star. Uh, this will output true as star can be zero or more of any characters, so it matches the second A. And for example three, our input string is AB and our input pattern is dot star. This will return true as the dot correlates the A, and the star represents zero or more characters after the A, which will be our B in this case. Let's take a look at an example. So for this example, our input string is ABC, and our pattern is A dot C. In this case, we'll be outputting true, as the dot represents a single character, so we'll have ABC, where B is our dot, and this is fine. This problem is a bit easier to understand non-programmatically, as it's very simple to just see the input string in the pattern and know what is correct. It's a bit more difficult from the coding perspective. This problem will be using a dynamic programming matrix. We'll be using a 2D matrix with dimensions of the length of our pattern plus one by the length of our string plus one. Each cell will represent whether the substring up to that point in the string matches the substring up to that point in the pattern. The reason we're making our matrix one plus the length of our pattern and string is because at 0, 0, it'll be the equivalent of having an empty string and an empty pattern. And for that, it's always true. So during this problem, we're going to be iterating through our string and our pattern at the same time to determine if the pattern matches our string. And at each character in the string, we'll be referencing that same character in the pattern. And the pattern can either be a character, a period, or a star. When it's a character, we'll just determine if that character in the string is equal to that character in the pattern. If it is, we want a true. The second case is if there's a period. When there's a period, we want to compare that to the string to make sure there's a character in that point of the string as well matching that period. If there's a character there, we'll put a true. And the third case is the star case. This one's a bit more complicated and there's two possible paths for when there's a star in our pattern. When there's a star, either we ignore the preceding character and the star, or we remove the current character from the string and check if the remaining string matches the pattern. So for this problem, we start off by looking at the first character in the string and the first character in our pattern. Both of them are A, so they are equal. So we wanna put true in that location in our matrix. Then we wanna look at the next character in our string and the next character in our pattern. We see that we have a B and we have a, a period. Um, and since there is a character in our string, in the same position as the period in the pattern, that is also correct, so we put a true. And then for the third, we have a C in our string and we have a C in our pattern, so those match and we put true there too. And then at this point, since we've seen true the whole time, our output is true. Let's go through another example with a star. So for this case, we're starting out, we create our 2D matrix, we put in true for our first position, as that represents an empty string and an empty pattern. Then we move on to our next character in the string and the pattern. They're both A, so we put true. Then we go to the next, they're both B, so we put true. And then next we move to our C. Then at the star we see that C does not equal B, so we put a false here. And our output in this case would be false based off of the last diagonal we see. Let's jump into the code. First thing we wanna do is define our matrix. Then we'll want to define our dynamic programming function. And this function will use recursion to move through our string and pattern accordingly and comparing them to each other. The first thing we'll want to do is check to make sure we didn't do the current cell of the matrix already. And if we've done it already, we can just return the matrix. Next, we'll want to check if I or J have reached the end of the string or pattern. J is representing our current position in the pattern and I is representing our current position in the string. So we'll check J against the length of our pattern and we'll check I against the length of our string. 
And if j is at the end of the pattern, we want to return true if i is also at the end of the string and false if it's not. And if i is at the end of the length of string, we want to check to see if the length of our pattern minus our current j uh, is even or odd. If it's odd, we want to return false. Otherwise, we'll want to loop through the rest of our pattern, making sure the rest of them are stars. If at any point they're not a star, then we want to return false here. Otherwise, if they're all stars, we want to return true here. Next, we'll want to compare our current string value with our current pattern value. If they are equal or if our current pattern value is a star, we want our current position to be true. And we'll store this in a variable for later. We'll call it match. Next, we want to take care of our cases where our pattern is currently a star. So if j is less than our length of our pattern minus 1, and our next pattern position after j is equal to a star, we either want to skip the star and the character before it, or match the current character and move to the next character in the string. And we're doing this by calling our dynamic programming function with j plus two, or we're taking our match and doing dynamic programming function of our i plus one, which is the next character in our string. So at this point, if j is not less than the length of our pattern minus one, and the next character in our pattern is not a star, we want to call our dynamic programming function again with our next string character and our next pattern character. At this point, we can put our result into our current matrix cell that we're looking at and return our result. That's it for our dynamic programming function, so let's finish up our isMatch function. And we start off our dynamic programming recursion by calling our dynamic programming function with i equals 0 and j equals 0. That's it for our code. There were two small syntax errors. One is missing a parentheses here, and the second is we had a colon after false here. So now it should be good. We'll run it again. All test cases passed, so let's submit. Our code was accepted, so that's it for this problem. If you like this content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to check out my channel. Thanks for watching.